we're looking at the same quadratic equation right there, right? ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where a does not equal 0. Um, and there's the formula if we wanted to solve for x. It gives us both values, and it doesn't matter if we have a negative on the inside of that square root. It just means that our two answers are not real, okay? So, and that's kind of what this has all been leading up into. Uh, how we get this, I want to say I made a video on it. If not, I will. <coughs> just to show you guys that if you wanted to memorize that stuff, you could. In other words, remember it's like manipulating equation stuff, right? You can solve this equation for x by using some completing the square stuff. And if you were to do that, you would, you would get this stuff right here. All right, so, um, but we don't really care about that, and it's a huge pain to kind of think about it like that, and it hurts our brains, and we have to take more aspirin with Tylenol because our heads hurt. But I like that, the quadratic formula. Did anyone look that? Use the quadratic formula to solve this, so let's, let's look at what it was. Let's write it down. From here, we're just looking at plug and chug stuff, okay? I'm just going to replace any A value with what the A value is, any B value with what the B value is, and C value. Now, the, the problem with this, by the way, is um, this right now isn't in that AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero form, which we can do. We, we, can, we can put it there. Yeah, we just need to subtract 14X from both sides, right? So minus 14X, that's a, there we go. So now this becomes a, let's, I'm going to highlight these in different colors. So I've got a 5x squared, and this is now minus 14x. And then I also had a uh, minus 3, right? There we go. Now this equals 0. So now this is in a quadratic equation form. And here I have an a value of 5. My B value, notice that's a negative 14, and the C value is negative 3. So I'm just going to go into this and replace all of my, all of, I'm sorry, I guess I'm starting with the B values on this. So my B is a negative 14. Now notice I, that was a negative B to start with, right? So I have a negative, negative 14. And over here I've got a negative 14 that's going to be squared. Now let's go ahead and replace the A values with the A value that I have, which is 5. So that would be 4 times 5 and 2 times 5. And then finally we'll replace the C value with what is negative 3. There's only one C to replace in this thing. Okay. If you were to plug this into your entire calculator, into your, entirely into your calculator, as long as you plugged it in right, it would give you both answers. Most of your calculators would. Just be careful, because if you do get the decimal, that's not really what we're looking for, right? None of the answers we've shown as the irrational numbers. Um, so we just may have to use the radicals for this. So now if I were to evaluate this, I've got x equals, that now becomes a positive 14. This is plus or minus the square root of 14 squared. So that now becomes a 196 minus 4 times 5 is 20 times negative 3 is a negative 60. So yes, that becomes minus a negative 60. And this is all over 2 times 5, which is 10. All right, continuing with the simplification on this, <coughs> we've got an x equals the 14 plus or minus the square root, 196 minus a negative 60, so that's going to be plus. That becomes a 256, and this is all over 10. And the square root of 256 is a 16, so we got 14 plus or minus 16 all over 10. Now we should do the operations on this. So in other words, I probably need to separate these, looking at 14 plus 16, and then I'll divide that by 10. So that becomes a 30 over 10. 
which is 3. That's one of our answers. And then on the other hand, we had 14 minus 16 over 10. So that's a negative 2 over 10, which would be a negative 1 fifth.